Hey everyone, Kathy the Vegan Prepper here, and today we are processing my wholesale order of organic cauliflower. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Vegan Prepper. All right, so here is our little cauliflower processing station. Some of this is destined to be roasted and dehydrated. Other bits of it are destined to be blanched and frozen as florets. So we will sort of see, um, you know, how much of each I'm going to make as we get into it. So I have a large bowl for the chopped florets and then a smaller bowl for the compost pieces, which is just going to be all of these leaves and whatnot. Um, and so just sort of getting that ready, it's all organic. So yeah, I'm going to be composting whatever the leftover bits are. And I have a helper helping me today with the process. And so that's what we're gonna be doing. <laughs> it is all cut and ready to get washed and further processed very exciting all right so we've got our first batch ready to go into the oven um, rinsed I just sort of cut off any little tiny black spots as I was rinsing and that's how I decided to deal with it rather than doing it while I was doing the initial cutting so these are going to go into a 400 degree oven for anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes just depending on how long it takes and then halfway through i'll be switching the trays like whichever ones end up on the bottom i'll switch to the top and switch the top ones to the bottom so all of these cauliflower florets are destined to be dehydrated all right here's the remainder of the cauliflower washed and ready to go into my fridge so that they can wait for me for a little while until i'm ready to complete the entire process Okay, so for any of you who would like to start processing larger amounts of produce and you just have absolutely no idea where to start, although even what I just did probably doesn't seem like a large amount of produce to some people, <laughs> to other people, that's an overwhelming amount. And so I just thought I'd share a little bit of my methodology, my thought process, and my tips and tricks for getting stuff done especially if you already live an extremely busy life and you're wondering how do I fit yet one more thing in. So number one is to kind of plan ahead of time the pieces or your stopping points uh, because a lot of times jobs can take longer than we expect them to take. So if you have a planned stopping point, uh, meaning like this is a place where now I don't have to continue working if something else should come up, that is always just a great thing to sort of have in mind ahead of time, as well as to have uh, storage containers ready and um, fridge space ready for the items. Now, if you've just pulled items out of your fridge, you likely already have the fridge space. So like for me, my hope was to basically get to exactly where I got just now um, to have my first batch of cauliflower roasting in the oven. And then while that was roasting, I completed washing the rest of the cauliflower that was cut cutting off like the little black bits as I saw them. And then as I was washing them, I was putting them into my prepared containers. And I just, actually, I just used these old, like um, from Veggie Bites <laughs> that I got at Costco. Uh, they used to come with a nice lid. And so that's like a free freezer container basically. So I saved those, but those are what are what my cauliflower florets are now sitting in, in my fridge. Um, and so now that I'm at this point, basically what's going to happen is I'm going to pull the cauliflower out of the oven and then I'm going to go run to my son's school and pick him up because I'm having to fit this in my life 
just like, you know, somebody else is probably having to do that as well. So I've actually just bought myself even a few days if I don't complete the process with the cauliflower. Um, and I know that too. So gathering information, every little bit of information is helpful for your planning purposes. Um, from this book, Fridge Love, I have absolutely no, um, connection really with this author or this book, except for the fact that I just sort of love her like ridiculously, like I, I fangirl pretty hard over her and her Instagram account um, and all her gorgeous fridges. And she eats the um, Dr. Joel Furman eat to live way. So she has basically after years of doing that and years of prepping her fridge, she has a ton of experience on exactly how to store produce, how long it lasts. And the section, even if you don't care about any of the whole food plant-based recipes, and even if you don't care about ever um, organizing your fridge or making it look, um, you know, like all perfect like that. The section on produce, I think is worth the price of this book. Like, I don't know, I would say 10 times over, but I would not have spent $200 on this book. But you know, I was just saying like, the price of the book that one section is worth the price of the whole book as far as I'm concerned. So for instance, for this project, I went to cauliflower and she looks she shows kind of like this is how you pick a good one in the store and then this is the best way to prep she's got prep and storage right here to prep and store she talks about how long it will last in its various forms and she says that once you've cut it into florets the cauliflower florets will last 10 to 12 days in a glass food storage container so i used plastic so it's not going to last quite as long um, but I know I should still get at least, you know, like three or four days, I would think at the very least, even though they're in plastic instead of glass. And so that gives me a little bit of a buffer in the project so that I can start again when I have open time, which is actually hopefully tonight. I'm planning on finishing the whole thing today, but I'm just giving that as an example. So like, if you know how long something will last in the fridge, you can kind of plan a stopping point so that you don't necessarily have to do the entire project in one day, because sometimes that can be overwhelming, um, especially when there's multiple steps like roasting and then dehydrating. And so there's many steps. So obviously the dehydrating actually at this point won't be done until tomorrow, uh, but I am going to get it in the dehydrator tonight. Um, so uh, my final tip is to, especially if you are dealing with a kitchen that is a disaster and not caught up right now, like actually me, my kitchen's a disaster right now. And it used to be something that would prevent me from even beginning a new project because I didn't want to add yet more chaos to <laughs> just the, ah, the kitchen, um, which basically it's like, if you don't do dishes for half a day, the kitchen looks like you haven't cleaned it in a year, even though it's like, I, ugh, it's been like, weeks it's been pristine and just like these last couple of days have been a little crazy and I haven't like gotten in there as much as I normally do so it looks like I just don't ever do anything um and that you know just ugh, it's it's unjust really is what it is, but we're not going to get into that. So basically I still needed to start this project. I need to get going on that cauliflower. I need to get some of my fridge space back so that I can buy another batch of wholesale produce, which I will, pro which I will <laughs> also process, but I need to get some space so that I can continue moving forward with my preps. Um, and so basically the tip is, especially if your kitchen is already messy, just wash everything that you use in your prep session, wash it all and get it all put away um, before, or don't consider yourself done with this part of your prep until that is done so that you just don't add anything else to your kitchen. And so like the big bowl and the big cutting board I was using is already dried and, uh, they're washed and dried and put away. Actually, I just washed everything in that big bowl. Um, and then things like the knives and stuff, those are just like on my dish rack next to my sink and I'll put those away later. But that also just, just really helps. You're not adding at all to the mess in your kitchen. You've done your project, but it's already set. And so it took me, I timed it. It took me less than three minutes to wash the dishes and get them put away. Um, and then all of the washing of the cauliflower that I had left took less than 20 minutes. So it was done before the timer went off for the first roasting session. And then now they, the trays have been switched. Like I said, they are in the oven roasting for their second go. And then, um, 
I will pull them out and poke it with a fork and see if it's done. Hopefully it will be done. And then I will leave <laughs> to go pick up my son and then come home. They will be cool enough. At that point, I can cut them, get them in the dehydrator and then decide whether or not I'm going to start a new batch um, and I'll see how many how many trays am I going to take up with this project. I'll see whether I will start a new batch or not at that point. So that's just kind of like working through. But I, I think it's mainly that like figuring out what is my stopping point going to be in case I get interrupted, even if I have an entire day and I know that I can finish the project, I always still plan for needing to have a stopping point. Um, and then cleaning up everything that you use so that it doesn't become overwhelming, um, especially if you already are kind of behind in your kitchen. So it happens. But anyway, that's how you kind of get it done and try to plan for life when it happens, even in the middle of these big projects. Okay, so let's go ahead and go look at what we're dealing with out of the oven. Okay, so the next step after everything is out of the oven and cooled is I'm taking these pieces and just cutting them smaller uh, to fit them onto the dehydrator trays. For the most part, I'm aiming for roughly um, one quarter inch to one half inch, like nothing too much thicker than that, even though some of these are thicker for sure. But I'm just sort of taking the, the um, florets and slicing them where needed to, to just sort of make that happen. Um, and then, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get these into the dehydrator. Of those sheets total so uh, granted the baking sheets were a little small but eight of those fit into just those two quart jars that I showed you just now and even still I don't mean to sound like a broken record but I think that dehydrating the, like one of the number one things about it is that not only are you creating a shelf stable item but you are saving a ton of space and so especially for anybody who has a small space or if you just want to maximize the space you have say you do have some space but you want to maximize it I just think dehydrating is like number one because as far as I understand it and somebody please correct me if I'm wrong because I'm definitely open to um, being corrected if I'm incorrect I'm pretty sure freeze drying doesn't really save space like the way that freeze drying works <laughs> I have my little friend. I told her this is just going to be really fast, but apparently it's still taking too long <laughs> and that is fine. Uh, but anyway, she's pretty much always right here every time I'm making a video. Mwah. So uh, appreciate all those moments that she does give to you guys uh, without me paying all my attention to her. But anyway, um, so as far as I understand it, freeze drying does not save a ton of space um, it's because the items come out of the freeze dryer basically the same size as when they went in. Now that probably has a lot to do with why it rehydrates so well and stuff, but um, I'm not necessarily trying to knock freeze drying. freeze drying. I'm just trying to point out, I think, what is one of the main advantages of dehydrating, which is the space savings. And I think that that will be it. That's how I will leave you guys. Um, and then the cauliflower, the way that I made it today uh, with the uh, roasting and then the dehydrating, like fully cooking it first, means that now all of that cauliflower is an instant type food. So you're not going to need to really boil it at all, just pouring boiling water over top, letting it reconstitute. You will have fully rehydrated cauliflower after just a little while. So I love putting those into things like instant noodle cup type things that I make into pint-sized mason jars. And I definitely will be showing more of that on the channel in the future, how I put together meals like that, that almost are like a replacement kind of for like a ramen cup type thing. Although I, I haven't figured out yet how to do long noodles. 
Uh, but yeah, anyway, like I said, I will go ahead and cut this off. And sorry that it's so ridiculously unprofessional, but she... Um, I don't know. I'm not going to try to refilm this because the same thing will happen again. <laughs> so, you are so funny. Anyway, okay, that's it, you guys. As always, I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful. I look forward to hearing from you guys in the comments. See you later. Bye.